Hey everybody, this is chapter 7, Algebraic Modeling, and the very first section, 7.1, Linear Equations. Algebraic modeling in general is just um, basically trying to take data, and uh, real-world data, and model a specific situation with an equation, so that you can do things like uh, predictions, for example. And uh, linear equations just means that we're going to focus on... Um, equations that just have regular x and y so um, x and y to the first power no second powers no third powers no square roots nothing weird just regular old x and y and so here for example we have uh, ax plus by equals c which is kind of what what's sometimes called a standard form of a linear equation notice you just have regular x and y and a b and c are just standing for um, generic numbers we don't know what they are but they're some fixed numbers So first we're going to uh, start by reviewing a little bit of basic algebra. So if you have an equation like this and you want to solve for x, kind of your, your main goal is to get all of your x's on one side and all of your numbers on the other. So keep in mind it's an equation, so whatever I do to one side I have to do to the other. And I would start this equation by taking the 5x and subtracting it to the other side um, to combine it with this 9x. So we will subtract 5x from both sides obviously this one will cancel out and we will be left with a minus 7 equals 9 plus 9x minus 5x will give us a 4x and now all of our x's are on one side and now I'll go ahead and move the numbers to the left so we need to take the 9 and move it over so we'll subtract a 9 from both sides the 9's cancel out and here negative 7 and negative 9 will give us a negative 16 and this equals just 4x and lastly to get x by itself here um, it's being multiplied by 4 so to break up that multiplication we're going to divide by 4 again on both sides so the 4's cancel out we're left with x and here negative 16 over 4 will give us a negative 4 because a negative divided by positive is still a negative. And there we go. So that's just kind of a review of some basic algebra. Next thing we're going to talk about are x-intercepts and y-intercepts. And as you can see, I have a, um, a little uh, xy plane here, and I have this blue line that's representing some random um, uh, linear equation. and I've highlighted the x and y intercepts. So all the a y intercept for example is simply the point where the line crosses the y axis, which would be right here. Similarly, the x intercept is the point where the x where the line crosses the x axis. Now, let's take the y intercept. The key to finding the y intercept is that if you're on the y axis, you haven't went left or right at all, which means that your x coordinate has to be 0. So to find the y intercept, you're actually going to set x equal to 0 and then solve for the y that goes with it to find that point. Similarly, if you're looking for the x-intercept, the key here is that you haven't went up or down at all. That means your y um, coordinate must be 0. So if you want to find your x-intercept, you set y equal to 0, and you solve it for x. So in this example, they want us to find the x and y-intercepts. We have some linear equations, 6x plus 4y equals 12, and we're going to go ahead and start with the x-intercept. So that means um, if we're looking for the x-intercept, it means we're on the x-axis, and that means y equals 0. So we're going to set y equal to 0, and then we'll solve for x. So in our equation, it'll become 6x plus 4 times 0 equals 12. All right, so we're plugging in 0 for y. Don't forget 4y means 4 times y. So this will be 4 times 0, which in this case is just 0. So that piece goes away completely, and we're just left with 6x equals 12. And then if we solve this for x, it's pretty simple. We just divide both sides by 6, and we get x equals 2. Now, we just found a specific point, right? Um, we plugged in y equals 0, and we got x equals 2. If you're going to write that as a point, don't forget your x-coordinate comes first, so we got x equals 2, and we plugged in y equals 0, so um, our y-coordinate comes second. So this right here is our x-intercept, is the point where um, our line crosses the x-axis.
Similarly, if we're looking for if we're looking for the y-intercept, um, we're going to start by setting x equal to zero. So in our equation, it'll be six times zero plus four uh, y equals twelve. And just like last time, 6 times 0 is 0, so that piece goes away. We're left with the 4y equals 12. And if we want to solve this for y, we divide both sides by 4. 4s cancel out, and we get y equals 3. Again, we just found a point, though. We set x equals 0, so our x-coordinate is 0. And we got y equals 3, so our y-coordinate is 3. This is the y-intercept, the place where the graph crosses the y-axis. Sorry, one last note on this actually. Um, you, uh, you can use these two points to actually graph the equation now. So for example, if I want to graph this equation, I can just make a little x, y, oops, a coordinate axis. And um, we had a x-intercept of 2, 0. That means we're going to go right to and then plot our point right there. And we had a y-intercept of 0, 3, so we're going to go 0 in the x-direction, but we're going to go up 1, 2, 3, and plot our point. And then our line will be the line that goes between both of these points. All right, so that's one way you could actually graph equations is by getting the x and y-intercept, plotting those points, and then graphing the line. Um, OK, the next thing is we need to talk a little bit about some um, um, slope formula and the slope intercept form. So the slope formula is this formula m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And m stands for slope and this formula literally just given two points on a line um, you plug them into this equation and you get the slope. So here's the two points that you need just generic x and y, x and y. They go in the equation and it spits out the slope. The slope intercept form, um, you're probably familiar with y equals mx plus b. It's just in, this is actually an equation of a line, and it's in a specific form which we call slope intercept form. You can get any equation in this form if you just solve for y, if you try to get y by itself. The key to this is the number next to the x, the m in this case, um, that will be your slope. And the number by itself without an x, that is your b, which stands for the y intercept. So that's why it's called the slope-intercept form, because you have a slope and an intercept right from the equation. Um, this question wants us to find the slope of the line that passes through these two points. Uh, I recommend, we're just going to use that slope formula because we have two points. I recommend you start by actually labeling these points though. Let's call this x1 and y1. We'll call this x2 and y2. That'll help us plug things in or line things up when we go to uh, plug them into this formula. So once again, this is our slope formula. And so our y2, um, we'll start at the top here, our y2 is a negative 4. And then the formula says we put a minus, and then the y1 is a 2. Right, so that's what you get when you plug in the values from our points on the top. Uh, same thing on the bottom, x2 is a negative 3, then minus. Our x1 is a negative 1, so notice we have another negative here. I'm going to put that in parentheses. Very important that you include all these negatives here, so we get a negative 3 minus a negative 1 there. You can just throw this into the calculator and it'll calculate this for you, but um, if you're going to do the subtraction by hand, usually when you're subtracting with the positives and negatives, you want to turn it into addition, and the way we do that is with um, a little rule that's called add the opposite. So what that means is, uh, let's take the top for example, negative 4 minus 2. First number always stays the same, so it's going to stay negative 4. The minus is going to become a plus, that's the add part and add the opposite. And we were subtracting a regular 2, well we need to change it to the opposite now since we're making an addition. The opposite of 2 it just becomes a negative 2. So opposite just means change its sign. So that's what the top looks like if you turn it into addition. Let's do the same thing on the bottom. First number stays negative 3. The minus becomes a plus. And we were subtracting a negative 1. The opposite of a negative 1 would be a positive 1. So now we turn it into addition. 
Then on the top, negative 4, negative 2, that's going to give us a negative 6 altogether. And on the bottom, we have a negative 3 and a 1, and a positive 1. Positives and negatives cancel each other out. And since we have more negatives, we're going to have more negatives left over. And the difference between 3 and 1 will actually be 2. So we'll get a negative 6 over a negative 2. This simplifies to a positive 3, which is our slope. Don't forget here, a negative divided by a negative gives us a positive. Um, this is actually a really easy problem. It's asking us to find the slope and y-intercept of this equation. But if you notice, this equation is in y equals mx plus b. We know that because any time your equation is solved for y, it's automatically in y equals mx plus b. So the m is always the number next to the x, so our m is going to be 8, and the b is the number without the x. And you're going to include the sign here, so the b is going to be negative 10. So that means our slope is our m, our slope just equals 8, and our y-intercept, which is our b, that's going to equal a negative 10. Okay, so, so far that's just been a review of some basic algebra stuff. Um, here's a couple uh, modeling problems. So in this first one, this is on page 311 um, from your book, number 65. It says, in 2010, the revenue for Starbucks was $2.17 billion and increasing at a rate of $0.47 billion per year. Um, part A says, write a linear equation of the line in slope-intercept form. That's our y equals mx plus b. That models this information. It says, treat 2000 as year zero. This is kind of important because um, instead of using the actual number 2000, we're just going to use, we're going to treat that like year zero, so we're just going to use zero. And this kind of um, helps us make the numbers in the model a little bit more manageable. This also means, um, like if you look at part B, it says, use your model from part A to predict Starbucks revenues in 2020. If we make um, 2000 year zero, the year 2020 is going to be um, year 20, right? Because it's 20 years after year zero, 20 years after the year 2000. So this is going to, again, keep our numbers small, but it also means that when we actually use our model, X is standing for um, the number of years after 2000. So for part A, let's take a look at what we actually have here. They're giving us a point. They're saying in 2000, the revenue for Starbucks was 2.17 billion. Well, that is a point because um, our year is year zero and our money is 2.17 billion. Now notice I put the zero first. That's because if you have a choice, which we, we pretty much do here, um, you always put time as your x value. So time is our years. I put that first in the point, which means it's our x coordinate. And now that means our y's are um, revenue in billions of dollars. So, so again, this point means in the year 2000 or year zero, um, Starbucks revenue was $2.17 billion. Well, this is nice because um, remember, if we want our y-intercept, which is our, our b and the y equals mx plus b, y-intercept is the point where x is zero. Well, you can see this is a point right here where x is zero, and our b is the y-coordinate that goes with it. 2.17 is going to be our b, our y-intercept. And then also it says um, it's increasing at a rate of $0.47 uh, billion dollars per year. Um, anytime you see rates, they're usually talking about a slope. And since they're giving us um, a rate of change per year, that is automatically our slope. Our M is going to be that $0.47 billion. So we have everything we need for our equation now because they want it in y equals mx plus b and they have given us our b and they have given us our m so our equation is going to be y equals m which is our 0 0.47 our rate of change plus b which is 2.17 so my pluses are getting a little sloppy X plus. There we go. So this is the answer to part A. This is our model. And if you plug in, um, remember X is the years, the number of years after 2000. If you plug that into this equation and run the numbers, it should spit out the revenue, um, Starbucks's revenue, in whatever year you plug in. So that's pretty much what we're going to do in part B. Keep in mind the year 2020. 
corresponds to the x value of 20 because x is simply standing for number of years after 2000. So we'll take our equation and we'll replace x with 20. All right, so don't forget your order of operations here. The first thing you have to do is the multiplication. So we're going to multiply the 0.47, and you can just throw this in the calculator, um, times 20, which you get 9.4, and then add that to the 2.17. And you should get about 11.57. Uh, don't forget to answer the question. They're asking us for Starbucks revenue, right? And this is in billions of dollars, so our answer should be $11.57 billion. And that's our answer to Part B. Okay, and then lastly, we have this problem here that says, um, Jared furnished his new apartment by renting a living room set and a TV from a local rent-to-own store. He has Elmore payments on the living room set, of $22 each and T payments remaining on the TV of $13 each. The total that he owes overall is um, $341. The, um, the instruction of this problem, by the way, if you, if you look in the book um, in the italics above this problem, it basically just says write an equation that um, models the situation. So basically, um, if he has Elmore payments on the living room set and the payments are $22 each, if we want to calculate the total amount that he still owes just for the living room set, we're going to take the um, the amount of money per payment, which is 22, and we're going to multiply it by the number of payments he has left, which is L. If you think about it, if they said that he has five payments left and each payment is $22, well, 22 times 5 would end up calculating the total amount he, he owes still. So we're doing the same thing. We just don't know exactly how many payments he still has. We're just going to call it L. Well, same thing with the TV set. He's got T payments remaining, and they're $13 each. So 13 times T should represent everything he owes um, for the TV. Now, the last thing we have is we know that the total that he owes is 341. So if we take these two values, the 22L and the 13T, and we add them together, this should be the same thing as the total amount that he owes. So this should be equal to the total amount that he owes, which is 341. And that's actually it. This is just the equation that they want. Right? And again, it makes sense because this piece is the amount he owes, the total amount he owes for the living room set. This is the total amount he owes on the TV. And if we add that together, we should get the total amount he owes in general, which is the 341 that they tell us. And that's it. That's 7.1. Let me know if you have any questions, and um, I'll see you next time.